Hey guys, Matt here today. Going to actually redo a, a video I did yesterday, Ephesians 3, 7 through 9, uh, mostly because the video yesterday wasn't very good. I, uh, I was bouncing around a little bit too much. Just want to hit this section here before we get into yet another mystery. Okay, let, let's set the table real quick. Ephesians 3, 1 through 6, Paul talks about this mystery, this is basically he's talking about the gospel, the mystery of the gospel, that, that now the Gentiles are fellow heirs, right? This was made known to him by revelation. Everything that Paul learned was by revelation, revelation of the risen Christ. We saw that in, in Galatians 1, 11 through 20 or so. How Paul spent three years in, in Arabia with the risen, glorified Christ. Christ took out all the garbage out of Paul, filled him back in, with, with with everything he wanted. He filled him in with, with himself and the Holy Spirit and just an amazing time for Paul. I, I can't imagine what that was like. But during this time Paul had many many uh, mysteries revealed to him. And uh, you know we saw that in Colossians 1 24 through 29 the mystery that Christ is in us. It's not just some little vanilla saying you would say to a Sunday school kid. Christ lives in you in your heart. No, no, no. Really if you're born again, Christ is in you, the hope of glory. We saw it in Ephesians 1. We're even going to look at that verse today, how he, he reveals a mystery of his will to us. Wow, that's amazing. And, and there's a mystery, you know, in the first couple of verses about the gospel, there's a mystery tomorrow. This is amazing, amazing stuff. But today, in verses 7 through 9, I think it's important to look at Paul in his new position as a minister of this gospel. Let me read the verses. Of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace. This is important. It's according to the gift of God's grace. How? Which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone, not just the Gentiles, for everyone, what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things? All right, we'll get into the mystery tomorrow, but before we do, we need to look at this because Paul, there, there's an interesting little thing going on here. There's, there's a fact that Paul is, is now made a minister, and he's made a minister by the gift of God's grace. How, how is that possible? Which, well, it was given to him through the working of his power, so God poured his grace down on Paul and is working through Paul in power. Right? And I think this is, this. you got to talk about this because if we see one of the main themes I see over and over and over in the New Testament, which the Lord has really been pressing on me the last year or so, is that this, this, this term of grace and how grace is so much more than just forgiveness. And Praise God, it is forgiveness, it is redemption. You know, we, by grace we're saved. We saw that in Ephesians 2. But that's just the beginning. Salvation isn't the end, it's just the beginning. We saw that in, in Hebrews, in Hebrews 6. <clears throat> the author names salvation as, as one of the six things, which is basically milk. He says it's baby land, it's just the beginning. And uh, we're going to talk about that today, how... How this grace is so much more than just forgiveness. And we, we see a prime example. Here we see Paul, probably the greatest preacher, the greatest man of faith uh, since Jesus Christ. And, and how is it possible that he can do this? Well, it's a gift of God's grace, right? And, and it was given to him by the working of his power. Even though he was the least of the saints. This is important too because... What Paul's saying here isn't some false humility, right? Paul's not trying to be, oh, ah, shucks, um, no, I'm the least of all the saints. No, no, no. Paul gets this. He gets that he's the least of all the saints. Why? Well, because Paul met the risen Christ, right? Paul was on the road to Damascus, and he heard something that probably was etched in his brain until he got to heaven, and that is, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Right? He saw a light brighter than the sun. Brighter than the sun. That was Jesus Christ. And then Christ uh, saw fit to minister to Paul for three years in Arabia. We saw that in Galatians 1. Um, and so, so, so Paul spends this time with the risen Christ. And during this time, you better believe that Paul was probably just like Paul in Ephesians 2, 
he uh, he motivated the, the Ephesians to look back. Hey, remember, you guys were, were dogs. You guys were uncircumcised dogs. You were children of disobedience, children of wrath. You, you had nothing. You had nothing. Paul, no doubt, looked back. Because it wasn't that long ago when Paul was holding the jackets of those guys who were stoning Stephen. And it wasn't those that long ago when Paul was persecuting Christians himself. And that's why he was on the road to Damascus, right? So Paul saw all of this in his past, and then he looked up and he saw the risen Christ. And he spent time with the glorified risen Christ. So it was pretty easy for Paul to say, I'm the least of all the saints. Right? I'm the chief of all the sinners. And that's how we should feel too. If we've truly had an experience with Christ, we too will say that we're the least of all the saints and we're the chief of all the sinners. Paul gets this. He gets this and he gets that he needs God's grace. And I think this is something that, that Paul mentions here because he wants the Ephesians to know this. That this isn't him. This isn't him. It's God working through him to minister this gospel. And God wants us to know that too. God wants us to know that, that this grace that he's given us is so much more than just salvation. We need grace to function on a day-to-day -day, uh, scale for, for living as a Christian. And we certainly need grace to minister. Otherwise, we're just going to be ministering to people from the flesh. And In fact, I'd like to read a verse from Ephesians 1, 7. We're on Ephesians 3, 7 talking about grace. If you go back, Ephesians 2, 7 has a, a verse about the immeasurable riches of grace. And Ephesians 1, 7 has a very interesting look at grace. And I want to read it because it really makes a point of how this grace is so much more than just salvation. Ephesians 1, 7. In Him we have redemption through His blood. Right? The forgiveness of our trespasses. Yep, that's what, the, that's what redemption is. The forgiveness of our trespasses. How? according to the riches of His grace. Okay, we see it now with the riches of His grace. It's not just grace. Well, how do we get us the riches of His grace? How did He give them to us? Well, He lavished them on us. This is what God wants us to know. He didn't just sprinkle on a little grace and say, now you're saved, go on your way. No, He lavished His grace upon us in all wisdom and insight. This isn't the wisdom and insight of man. This is God's wisdom and God's insight. He lavished His grace. He richly lavished His grace on us in all wisdom and insight. Why? To make known to us the mystery of His will, which is to unite all things to Him, things in heaven and things on earth. Unite all things through Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. You, you notice how that, that passage starts out with redemption. It starts out with a single sinner being redeemed through His blood, and it ends up being God uniting all things to Him, and, and this, this grace is lavished on us, and it, it even tells us the mystery of God's will. We get to know the mystery of His will, and we see that it's poured on us in wisdom and insight, and on and on and on. That's what God wants us to know. He wants us to know that grace is so much more than just the forgiveness of sins. And if we're going to be effective witnesses, effective ministers, even if you're not called to preach and teach, we need to have God's grace working through us in power. Otherwise, we're just going to be preaching from the flesh. We're just going to be teaching people from the flesh. And really, even if you're not called to preach, everyone should be teaching someone. Remember what Paul, or what the author of Hebrews says in Hebrews 5, he says, guys, by now you should be teachers of this stuff. So anyone who's been saved for a couple of years really should be teaching somebody. And this is why we, we need God's grace in, in, in working through us in power, right? Paul knew this. That's why Paul was so effective. Paul was completely dead to self. It wasn't even Paul living anymore. It was Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And this life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul didn't even look at it as his life anymore. Paul looked at all the status and religion and education and everything he had in Philippians 7 and he says, hey, I count it all for loss. It's all for loss for Jesus Christ because Paul got it. None of that stuff meant anything anymore. Education, how slick we talk, how slick we dress, it doesn't mean anything if we don't have the grace of God working through us in power.
Paul knew that, and, and God wants us to know that too. In fact, I want to read a quote from a book I just, uh, I'm just about to finish. Probably one of the best books I've ever read next to the Bible. It's from Leonard Ravenhill. Why Revival Tarries, and, and Leonard says it best. He rightly says, Our abilities are our handicaps, and our talents are our stumbling blocks. Think about that. Our, abili our abilities are our handicaps. And our talents are our stumbling blocks. See, that's what gives a guy like me hope. That, that we don't need to rely on ourselves because it's not us. It's God working through us in grace and in power. Paul knew that. Paul knew that. Paul got that. That's why Paul was so powerful. That's why Paul could preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Because after all, how do you preach something that's unsearchable? Well, you do it by God's grace working through you in power. Right? That's powerful. All right, tomorrow we'll get to this next mystery which Paul is going to reveal. All right, peace.